Hi team. Every week on Fridays, I want to review one of our math story problems so that we can get it together as a team. You don't have to respond to this. It's just a resource. Here's our math story. Chantrice had some money. She spent $335 on an iPhone. Now she has $157 left. How much money did Chantrice have to start? I'm thinking in my head, hmm, how much money did she have to start? The first thing I do is annotate my work after I reread. It said Chantrice had some money. I'm going to circle the word some. She spent $335. I'm going to circle the word $335. Um, now she has $157 left. Then a question, I'm going to put my bracket. How much money did she have to start with? So now, after I annotate, I'm thinking in my head, making my key box. I know for the key, the start is some money, but I don't know what that is, so I'm going to put a box. Then I know the change is she went to the store, and from that some money, she spent $335. So I'm going to put $335 spent. Then the results says how much money. Then it says now she has $157 left. That's our result. I'm going to put left. So we don't know what she started with. We know that she spent this amount of money on the iPhone. Now she has $157 left. Now I'm thinking in my head, what are my parts and what are my whole? I know the word sum, I'm not going to confuse myself even though it's a key word. But if I have an amount of money in the beginning, then I'm starting to give away some money and I have what's left. I know that this beginning is my whole. I'm going to label it W. Even though it says some money, it is still my whole. Then I know I spent some money. I have a whole and I spent money, gave it to the cashier. That was a part I gave from my whole. So this is a part. Then in the other hand, I'm counting how much I have left, which is another part. Now I'm thinking, how do I find a whole if I have a part and a part? I know part, part equal a whole. So I know that I get to add the two up. We can do different strategies. Today, I want to focus on, let's see, 100 tens and ones. We're going to use our hundreds, our tens, and ones place value disc. Super easy. I know I'm going to represent the, both parts. I'm thinking in my head, this is going to look like 335 plus 157 equals some number that she got. This is my part, my part to get to my whole. I'm gonna represent both parts. I'm gonna start off with the hundreds. I know there's 300, so I'm gonna label 100 three times. Then there's 310, so I'm gonna label three tens. Then I have five ones. I'm going to label five ones. So check off that I represented 335. Next, I'm going to represent 157. I know 100 has one set of 100. I know 57 has five tens. And then I have seven ones. Then I'm going to check off that I have 100, 5, 10s, and 7 ones. Now, before I start counting, I'm going to make sure I compose so that I don't take a long time counting. I'm going to go back and look to see what are the ones I can compose. I notice that these ones are more than 10. I'm going to count up to 10, then I'm going to circle the group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to compose all of this. I'm going to move it here. 
I'm gonna double check to make sure that I don't have to decompose here. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No composing done in the tens, no composing done in the hundreds. Now I'm gonna go back and label how I counted with the purple marker. I'm gonna add all my hundreds, all my tens, and all my ones. Here I go. 100. Watch me label as I go. 200. 300. 400. Switch. 410. 420. 430. 440. 450. 460. 470. 480. And then 490. I'm not done yet. Switch. 491, 492. So my whole was 492. I'm thinking, does that make sense? That does make sense because 492 was my whole. I took 335, then I had 157 left. That makes sense. I'm gonna make sure that I go ahead and write the full answer. Centries. Started with 492, don't forget my money sign, dollars. And there you have it, our full answer with the correct unit.